Today I want to see if I can turn these foam scraps into some easy but cool usable Necron terrain. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. Apologies if you hear my 3D printer going in the background. I got a really cool kind of evil robot model going from this week's sponsor, and it's made me want to make some kind of sci-fi Necron-ish terrain. Often this terrain is really perfect and geometric and uses math. I want to see if I can just take some cut off scrap garbage and find a way to make some cool Borgish space, weird line of sight blocking scatter terrain without overthinking things too much. Just something fun and creative and easy. What I'd like to do is take a bunch of these scraps cut them into kind of different sized cubes and see if I can just glue them together in a way that looks interesting. Now when you're cutting styrofoam with a hot wire cutter, you want to have ventilation. I got an open window over there. Normally I would have my extraction fan taking out any of the excess gases or vapors, but because I'm printing on my resin printer right now at the same time, that fan is actually connected to the printer venting that instead. So I can't use the same ventilation I normally do, which means I'm going to put on a mask. And my first task will just be breaking these up into symmetrical cubes and rectangles of different sizes, I guess. And then I'll try to find a way to make them go together and look cool. Um, you know, sometimes when you're having a build day, everything just goes really naturally and smoothly and it's like the project makes itself. Sometimes you have days where all your cuts are bad and because I was kind of going fast and didn't take the time to set up my machine and just seems to be one of those days, at first I was having a hard time getting these cubes totally square, which is important for this kind of build. However, I got a small selection of them cubed up and square. Rather than doing a whole load here, I think I need to develop this idea into one complete test piece. Because sometimes when you don't test things before you build them, it just doesn't go as well as you'd hope. I got a bunch of pieces here that I think I can lay out in like a kind of wall with all sorts of different heights and projections or whatever and have this kind of weird look. But I want a dado chamfer rabbit, rabbit, I can't remember the right term, all of the edges to give them a little bit more of an interesting geometric shape. I think what I'll do here is set up my machine with a stop at the depth that I want here. How do I do this? Um, I'm just having a one of those days where my brain doesn't work so good to smart. I'm trying to create a situation where the gap between the wire and the fence is the same this way as it is this way. And both act as stops and I can just get them all exactly the same. A uh, quarter inch, lock that in and then measure this quarter inch as well. A little trick to lock in this type of guide, paper towel in the groove, makes it just a little bit tighter so it won't slide around. You don't have to hold it the whole time. So I go till it's stops, back out. And then if I flip this and come the other direction, and that should give me, one of them is a little bit shy, I think. Okay, let's try this. Go in, let the wire straighten out, and then pull. There we go, that works.
So what I'm going to do is make each of these pieces, you know, kind of chamfered out like this one at a time and then start gluing them together so that I can get thicknesses lined up how I want and uh, hopefully create a cool blocky wall. All right, I'm starting to get somewhere and it's looking kind of interesting and cool. It's looking a lot more Art Deco than I kind of anticipated with all the same little square cuts out. Something about it is, yeah, just a little too Art Deco and not futuristic enough. So I think I'm gonna carve in some symbols using a sharp pencil. If I were to carve in some alien designs might make it read more like Necron terrain. Like I'm going for something original and different looking here. I still want it to have a certain style that people recognize. I think some patterns like this will go a long way to selling the look. I'm hoping if I do that to everything, it'll start to look cool. Decided to make these two separate pieces rather than one, because I realized if I made one big wall, that'd be great. But because of these weird shapes, these could now be put in all sorts of different orientations. If you were to make several of these, you actually would have a really, really versatile set of scatter. There's so many different ways it can go together and because of all the weird shapes and little cuts out of it, it's very, very forgiving. This is actually, this is pretty great. I'm really happy about this part. Now I'm gonna throw some black Mod Podge on this, let it dry, and then I'm gonna paint them up and hopefully they look really cool. And while the Mod Podge is going on and drying, I wanna take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video. Some of you may know One Page Rules as the creators of an amazing, simple, easy to play and free tabletop war game. But did you know that they've taken their project even further and are now creating 3D printable models? Every month with a $10 Patreon pledge, you can get access to 15 new models models in different themes to create your own army, warband, team, or whatever. This month's theme is Lizardmen and Evil Robots. But every month they've got something that will suit a multitude of settings and games. You can use these models for their own game or as proxies in casual games of Warhammer. This is a great way to get a few armies together for some fun at-home wargaming with friends and family that won't cost you thousands of dollars in plastic. All you need is a resin printer and a membership and you can print off armies as large as you want for very little cost. The more you print, the cheaper it gets. The models all come pre-supported, making it really easy, but a unique feature is that they're also multi-part kits, giving builders an experience more similar to typical plastic kits. It also makes the swapping of arms and legs and weapons and heads and whatnot really easy. When you first join up, you also get access to a welcome pack with 15 more models, as well as other items like tokens and game aids. So in your first month, that's 30 models for only 10 bucks. It's a really great value. Seriously, this is by far one of the most cost effective ways to get yourself playing some war games. And the models look really great. They really give the expensive plastic models a real run for their money. I'll put a link in the video description so you can check them out for yourself.
so the painting went okay not amazing with this kind of like necron terrain there's a lot of really kind of classic nice ways you can paint this stuff out and using an airbrush and some nice like edge highlighting it would have looked really slick but i decided to go the old school easy cheap crafty way of just like a couple craft paints and a sponge you know painting out a dark green and sponging on a light green some blacks and metallics given how simple the paint job is it actually does look all right in the sense of if you were going to make a ton of these and you just wanted to populate a table really quickly this is serviceable enough however for some reason i decided to be counterintuitive and go against the typical thing and paint from green up to black instead of the other way around i thought it might just look neat um Eh, it's okay. I think if I did the same paint job in reverse order using the sponge and the same cheap paints, it would have looked pretty decent. Also doesn't stand out too great are these kind of lines that I etched in with the pencil. They don't stand out. So I decided I was messing around and I tried with a Uniball gel pen. It actually works a, a pretty great if you just trace over into these lines and it really makes them stand out. I'm realizing that etching these lines in first was a complete waste of time because if you're going to just put this silver pen in, you can do it right on after the paint, it indents and actually creates a more distinct clear line than with the pencil grooves. Cause it's actually kind of hard to fill these grooves with this pen cause it's not totally smooth. So if I were to make a whole bunch of these again, I wouldn't bother carving in all that stuff. I would paint them out black first, do the sponging in the reverse order, then draw on all the details with this pen. And I think that would be a really great, easy, fast way to, uh, paint out a table's worth of kind of Necron train. So I'm going to paint out that silver stuff. And then what I want to do is grab like a really bright neon green. And I want to paint out the edges and the insides of these corners to kind of make them look a little bit more like they're glowing. And hopefully it will save this reverse order paint job. Obviously these don't look amazing, up close especially, but I still think that this build and this day was a total success. I mean, really any day of experimenting and building and crafting and creating is a success regardless of what you end up making. But in this sense, I think these are a really good prototype, a really good proof of concept. And with some very small tweaking to the process, this would be an excellent way to quickly make up a really cool looking gaming table. I especially love just how incredibly modular these pieces are. I set out just thinking about them as walls, but it turns out they will actually be able to be used in a whole variety of ways. These are like Necron stackers. And if I were to make a whole set of these, I would make sure to finish off paint and sculpt the undersides too. So you could use these in any position you'd want 360 degrees. I hope you guys enjoyed this build. I hope that you enjoyed watching me kind of experiment and find my way through this project. I hope it was inspiring either for yourself to build something like this or just inspiring for you to go out and try something and you know go through the process of creating an idea. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Let me know in the comments section below. If you want to pick up any tools or supplies for your own hobby needs and you want to help this support this channel in the process, you can do that by doing your hobby shopping through blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have curated a really good list of all of the tools and supplies that I use regularly so you can get the right thing and shopping through those links helps fund the production of videos like this. And of course, if you really enjoy these videos I make, if they help you out a lot, they give you a lot of entertainment, a lot of value, the best way you can help ensure that I can keep making them is by supporting the channel on Patreon. That support is crucial to allowing me the time and resources to continue this channel and continue my passion. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. I don't play Necrons, but now I'm tempted just so that I can make this set into a whole table. 
Cheers. See you next week.